Hello again and welcome. We all know that with the Delta variant surging in different countries, we now are talking about the possibility of a third booster. The question is, can we give a different kind of vaccine for the third booster? Let's talk about it. If you like my video, please click subscribe, like, and the notification bell so that you will be updated of any uploaded videos to come. So one of our viewers actually asked me regarding mix and matching of COVID vaccines. We already have studies to show that mixing vaccines really provoke a potent immune response. We know that most vaccines against SARS-CoV-2 must be given in two doses, but the data or the idea of mix and match came about because of the variable efficacy of different vaccines and the problem of side effects. When we mix and match different brands of vaccines, we call it heterologous prime boost vaccination. It is where instead of the first, which is the prime, and the second, which is the boost injection of the same vaccine, they're two different ones, meaning the first and second vaccine can be different. Or perhaps a second boost, which is a third shot, is from another vaccine. The theory is that this could widen immune responses more than the same vaccine, as vaccines are targeted at stimulating the immune system in different ways. Mixed and match studies were actually prompted worldwide in large part by concerns over the safety of AstraZeneca when news came about the increased risk of blood clotting conditions known as thrombosis, where in March, some European countries decided to halt the giving of AstraZeneca to their groups of people. So this left many people partially vaccinated. So this prompted a Spanish study, which we call as the Combivax trial, to see whether if you give AstraZeneca as the first vaccine, can you combine it with a Pfizer vaccine as your second dose? Now, the Combivax study found a very strong immune response in people who were actually given Pfizer vaccine 8 to 12 weeks after a dose of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. And those who received the combination actually produced a very robust antibody production, 35 to 37 times more SARS-CoV-2 neutralizing antibodies and four times more SARS-CoV-2 specific immune cells called T cells than did people who only received one dose of the AstraZeneca. Furthermore, in other studies, which is a small study which looked at 340 healthcare workers who had received either two doses of the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine or an initial shot of the AstraZeneca vaccine, followed again by another dose of the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine. Both regimens triggered an immune response that included neutralizing antibodies and T cells. A different study by researchers of Saarland University of Hamburg, Germany, also found that mixed regimen was actually better at eliciting an immune response than were two AstraZeneca shot. It was as good, in fact, or better than two shots also of Pfizer vaccines. And lately, on June 25, the team behind the UK trial known as the ComCov study posted a preprint online showing that good immune response resulted irrespective of the order in which the two vaccines were given. So these trials so far have been too small, however, to test how effective combinations 
of vaccines are at preventing people from developing COVID-19. But this is what we know as of now. But number one, the high levels of antibodies after the second dose of a different vaccine are an indicator that truly combination of vaccines as an approach works. Neutralizing antibodies are probably a good surrogate for predicting efficacy because they help prevent viral infection. So in the ComCov study, for example, the highest antibody response was in people who received the standard two shots of Pfizer-BioNTech. But the response was almost as high in the combination of the AstraZeneca and Pfizer-BioNTech vaccines. This combination also had the best T-cell response more than twice as high as that of two doses of Pfizer vaccine, showing that combination of different vaccines do provoke good T-cell response, which might be better for people who have organ transplants or immunocompromise and are taking medications to suppress their immune systems. Because in this way, their body is struggling to produce antibodies. So there are different many there are therefore many ways of exploiting this knowledge in a strategic way. The question, however, are the safety concerns. Are this data enough for us to convince people that combination of different vaccine is a strategic approach? So far, there are no mix and match trials that have yet reported severe side effects. In the ComCom study, for example, mixing vaccines elicited, however, more side effects than did administering two doses of same vaccines. But this wasn't the case on a different study, which is the Combivax, where side effects were no worse than for the two shots of the same vaccine. So it really depends most likely on our body's response to this strategic approach. So the data where there were more side effects may actually also be due to the interval between doses. For example, the COMCOV participants received their second dose four weeks after the initial dose, whereas in participants in the German studies had at least nine weeks between shots. We all know that some safety concerns remain because we're combining two different vaccines, both of which may have their own profile of adverse events and effects, which could amplify any problems. However, the studies so far, which have enrolled only a few hundred people, means that the studies were too small to pick up any rare events, such as clotting conditions, which may be exacerbated if you combine both, according to current estimates, because it occurs around 1 in 50,000 people after first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine dose and less than 1 in 1.7 million after the second dose. So for now, my advice is due to the possibility of rare side effects, it is recommended that people stick to the standard two shots of a single vaccine until we have more data to support the practice of mixing and matching different vaccines. You are better off getting to the ones where we know that they work and there's known quantity when it comes to their safety due to the big studies. So it's good to have this data for now for readiness. Mix and match vaccines could be used to prevent rollout stalling because of supply issues. If it's an option of either getting a mixed schedule or no second dose, then certainly I would go for the mixed schedule. We all know that the COMCOV study has already begun testing other vaccines in people who have received an initial AstraZeneca or Pfizer. So not only the combination of these two vaccines. A study is now ongoing combining Sinovac developed by a company in Beijing with six other vaccines approved in a country which will run up to November of 2022. We all know that in Chile right now, where the issue of booster shot 
um, is ongoing on top of the two doses of Sinovac, primarily because of the apparent surge due to Delta virus. We all know that Chile has relied heavily on COVID-19 shot developed by China Sinovac to roll out one of the world's fastest vaccination campaigns, administering around 16 to 17 million doses already, along with around 4 million doses of Pfizer and smaller amounts of AstraZeneca. In fact, Chile provided us with very good real-world data for the effectiveness of Sinovac shot, which gave us 85% protection against hospitalization and 80% protection against death. Investigators right now are examining how long Sinovac protection can last, but researchers believe that the data will show that people who were vaccinated mostly in February and March will have and the second dose in March will probably need a third booster by September. So we'll await the data, we'll await their experience as Chile has always been the forefront in terms of providing us real world data specifically for Sinovac. In China, amid sporadic outbreaks, they continue to expand and accelerate nationwide inoculation with the launch of the country's first three dose COVID-19 vaccine which experts said would provide extra protection than one dose or two of those candidates. The three-shot vaccine is already being administered in at least 13 provincial level regions in China. Now again, uh, we heard news with regard to the Indonesia in terms of apparent failure of Sinovac in protecting the healthcare workers. Again, I would say in fairness to any vaccines, if there are breakthrough infections, whether we're talking about AstraZeneca, Sinovac, or Pfizer, remember it's due to the surge of variants so much so that the data from UK is showing that the possibility they will too need a booster shot maybe around September. If you look closely at these data in UK and the rest of the world, hospitalizations, for example, in England due to the Delta variant, are also accelerating upward faster than before, where half of the fully vaccinated are also being infected. In Israel, they're also trying to examine a third vaccine dose. Uh, the report said officials will also discuss booster shots specifically for elderly. In Israel, as we know, it's mainly Pfizer vaccines. And hopefully we will also have data from Israel whether the third booster will be helpful in curving the surge. Israel, as we know, um, has already also seen some 300 new daily cases in recent days, the highest rate since April amidst a resurgence of COVID-19 in this heavily vaccinated country. So we know that as of Friday afternoon, 27 people in Israel already are in serious condition from the virus. Six of the serious cases this week were of vaccinated individuals using Pfizer. All were over 60 with previous medical issues. Um, when we talk about mix and match, using inactivated virus vaccine like Sinovac uh, was recently published, where two doses of Sinovac and a third dose of an mRNA was given, showed that it was safe and it was protective, showing a boost in the antibody production. So whether uh, those of us who have been vaccinated with Sinovac, we can get a third booster probably in six months or in a year using an mRNA vaccine remains to be seen. But so far, boosting of the antibody production did a good job in increasing neutralizing antibodies. The bottom line here so far is that with different variants coming in, it is still best to be vaccinated. The CDC recently reports that majority of the deaths from COVID-19 infections now, in spite of the vaccination and due to the surge, still involves the unvaccinated. 99.5% of people killed in the last six months were the unvaccinated. With that, I hope I have convinced you that vaccination is the way to go, that hopefully you can await data with regarding mixing, mixing and matching of different vaccines. And hopefully we'll have more data to support 
whether we can get a different vaccine as our third booster shot. This is Dr. Jerry Tan. See you again soon.